Hi there, my name's Simon from Cramney Exam and welcome to week six, day one of your 12-week preparation course for your FCE, CAE or Matura Advanced Exam. We're almost halfway through the course. Today is Monday, which means it's writing day. For the first five weeks, I've been looking at each individual part of the writing exam, uh, explaining what it's all about, uh, how to prepare for it, and uh, some good resources for you to check out online in order to help you get ready for it. In this next couple of weeks, I'm going to be breaking down uh, questions telling you how I would plan for it, telling you how I would answer it using the resources online and giving you some hints and tips about the planning process because the uh, exam lasts 90 minutes as you know, each question is 45 minutes and out of that 45 minutes, 5 minutes you should be planning, you should be putting the outline of your answer in a brief planned form so you know what you're going to talk about in relation to the question, your plan, and then finally your answer. And there should be a relationship between the question, your plan, and your answer. If you just read the question and go straight into the answer, there is a possibility, I'm not going to say it will happen, that there is a high possibility you're going to make a mistake, you're not going to answer the question properly. So. If you haven't seen um, the videos before this video for the first five weeks, in particular because we're looking at essay questions today, if you haven't seen week one, then make sure you go find week one writing, which is uh, week one, day one of this course. Uh, check out that video because we're gonna uh, because the resources on that video and the explanations on that video will really help you before uh, watching this video in order to work out what's going on and why I'm saying the things that I'm saying. Okay, with all of that being said, let's get stuck straight into it. Okay, during this video I'm going to be talking about a couple of different websites. First of all, for information on how to do this essay question, I'm going to be referring to the excellent website rubenvalero.com, both for the FCE, which is what you can see here, and for the CAE, which you can see here. So um, click on those, these links will be in the video description below, so click on those links, get these pages open, because I'll be referring back to the information on these pages. Of course, these were pages that we had a look at in the uh, first video on essays way back at the beginning of the course. In terms of the questions that I'm going to be looking at, for the, uh, they will come from the uh, examenglish.com website. This is the FCE question and this is the CAE question. Of course, you'll see the links to this in the video description below, so click those, go through them, read them, make sure you know what kind of question or what the question is all about before we go any further. Because as soon as I start talking about the planning, if you don't know what the question is, you're going to be completely lost. So pause the video here, have a look at those pages, make sure you know what's going on. Okay, so let's have a look at the FCE question. Uh, it says, um, write 140 to 190 words in an appropriate style. In your English class, you've been talking about old people in society. Now your English teacher has asked you to write an essay. Around the world, people are living and staying healthy for longer and longer. What changes does this bring to today's society? Are these changes for good or bad? Notes, write about caring for the elderly, jobs, and your own idea. Now, in all of the first videos I've done for, doesn't matter which writing question, in the basics, I've always said, underline the things that you have to talk about. Now, I can't underline the screen, but what I can do is highlight. First of all, the first thing I'd highlight is English teacher. This is who you're writing to, because it says now your English teacher has asked you to write an essay. So your English teacher is saying, write something to me. So straight away, the register is formal or neutral. We're not using informal language here. First thing to underline. Secondly, what changes does this bring to, to, to today's society today? So, the, the, um, of course, we're talking about that first sentence. People are living and staying healthier for longer and longer. What changes does this bring to today's society today? So I'm talking, first thing I've got to talk of underline, or the second thing I've got to underline, but I've got to make sure I've got to talk about changes. There's got to be language in my answer which talks about 
changes. Not only that, I've then got to talk about whether these changes are good or bad. And I've got to write about these changes and whether these changes are good and bad within the context of caring for, el for the elderly or jobs. Uh, and jobs, I should say. And my own idea. Now, in choosing your own idea, I would always recommend going for something which is unrelated or unconnected to the two things that you're presented with. It is possible, of course it's possible, that caring for the elderly can mean many different things. And it does mean many different things. So you might decide for your own idea to choose one of the other things that caring for the elderly means. So for example, in answer to question number one, you might talk about, um, I don't know, um, healthcare, for example. Um, your own idea in relation to that might be something to do with, I don't know, um, making sure there's enough nurses available in order to look for uh, look after the old people. They are a little bit different, or you can argue that they are a little bit different, but for me they're a little bit too close together. And it's the same idea for jobs. You could find lots of things in jobs which are very, which are different, but are kind of close together. So I would suggest, if you can, to think of a third idea which is completely unrelated to the two things that you're presented with. Now I've going. I'm going to quickly move this out of the way. Let's move this uh, over here off the screen, and let's go and quickly tell you what I've gone for here. So here's my plan. Um, and I've written down here on my plan already that's a formal register. I've got my introduction here uh, and I'll go through that in a second. Second paragraph, caring for the elderly, which is um, the discussion, the first thing that we've got to talk about. Third paragraph is the second thing, which is about jobs. And the fourth paragraph, the fourth topic, I've chosen housing, housing for the elderly. And I've put together some arguments for that, and we'll go through those in a second. So housing is completely different to jobs. You, It is kind of related to caring for the elderly, but it's, it's a different discussion. And so I would say it's quite well separated from the idea of health. So caring in terms of health is one thing. Caring in terms of housing, I would say, is something which is completely different. So housing is a topic which you can choose, which is completely different to the other, or very, very different to the other two topics. OK, so now we've chosen uh, the third thing that we're going to talk about. Let's go into a little bit more detail of our plan. First of all, the introduction. And this, and let me drag back this page here. And let's go to Ruben Valero. Now, Ruben Valero organizes this brilliantly on his website. First of all, plenty of great advice about how to um, how to deal with the question and how to organize your um, answer. And this is your plan. And this is exactly what I've done here. Introduction, prompt one development, prompt two development, prompt three development, etc. And the conclusion. That's exactly what I've done here. And he goes into a little bit more detail about this process, planning, introduction, conclusion, second, third paragraphs, etc., etc. So this is why I recommend that you read this website before you um, or make sure you know everything on this website before you start answering the questions. So let's go uh, quickly remind ourselves of the question again. What changes does this bring to the society? Are these changes good or bad? Right. So. The introduction is going to be uh, an, a generic sentence about the situation today. And that situation is, as is presented in the question, that people are staying um, up living and staying healthier for longer. So what I've said is that there's more and more elderly people, there are different challenges, and there are different views of how to deal with this challenge or these challenges. So. What I've done is a very generic sentence or ideas uh, upon which I can build sentences which talk about the top uh, which talk about the topic of um, an aging society and I'll come back to aging society later on in this video now 
Uh, second paragraph, caring for the elderly. So I've come up with a pro for caring for the elderly, and that is a couple of pros. First of all, giving the elderly dignity and a sense of humanity, and also saying thank you to them for all that they've contributed to society. But I've also come up with a uh, cons for this. For example, there are some old people that don't want our help old people who can just deal with things by themselves they're not interested in getting our help care or otherwise and in terms of care in terms of health care that they take up too many resources so lots of money is spent on health care for the elderly people whereas perhaps it should be spent on uh, looking after the younger people or new diseases or whatever it might be for the third point of view of the jobs, um, lots of pros. Clearly, older people have got experience and knowledge, and they come up with different opportunities or different solutions. So if you ask a young person one thing, they'll come up with one solution. Ask an old person another th uh, the same question, and they might come up with something else. Uh, of course, the, the disadvantages to jobs is that they take up places that perhaps other people can have in terms of work, and that you might argue that old elderly people are difficult to train for new positions. And as regards housing, I've said that older people can live together and that they can have specially equipped housing to suit their needs as older people. But cons from this would be separation from society. If you have a community, sorry, I just bashed the microphone. If you have a, um, a community of old people apart from normal community, then you can separate them. And of course, there are the costs and the possibilities of building retirement villages or retirement centers. Now these are pros and cons, and yes, you could argue that there are lots of other pros and cons, but is this correct? Is this correct? I mean, will this get me good marks? Well, the answer is, it depends, because the question, and I'll drag it back over here, the question is, what changes does this bring to, to today's society? So I've got to talk about these pros and cons, in other words, I've got to talk about this discussion in relation to changes to today's societies and if these changes are good and bad. So, for example, the change would be that, for example, in terms of jobs, the change would be that um, compared to the past, more elderly people are working. This is good because... There is experience and knowledge and different opportunities and solutions. But this is bad because they're taking up places and difficult to train. So don't just go pro-con, pro-con without paying attention to the context of the question. Because if you don't include the context of the question, you're not going to get marks because you're not answering the question. So making a list of pro and con is good, but only if you remember the question, and let's drag that back up here, about the changes that this can create to today's society. So that's the all-important thing that you've got to uh, bear in mind. So you, you, I would uh, use this plan as a starting point, but I would amend this plan to bear in mind that there are changes. So how could I do that? For example, in my plan, I could write changes to society. So make sure changes to the society, good, bad. And I can make a headline for myself to make sure that I constantly see that. Or I could put that information in lots of different places. I could put it down here. Make sure that I've got it. Now, in the videos, I say underline the text and tick the text to make sure that you've talked about it. That, I mean, I'm showing you uh, on the computer how this works, so obviously it's a little bit different, but during the exam, you'd want to be annotating, highlighting, ticking, making sure you've included all of this information. Now, in terms of, let's just, just move that out of the way for the second. In terms of the conclusion, you've got to state your opinion. Now, a conclusion should always pay um, look at both sides but have a strong opinion element. So for example, it might be something like uh, adapting to the changes of an, uh, of an aging population might be difficult, there's the negative, but however, 
or, um, and, or you can think of another contrast linker. It's well worth doing so because the, uh, or I believe it's well worth doing so because the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. A clear expression of your opinion. I believe, I think, in my opinion, whatever it might be, you've got to get it in there. So that conclusion has both has also got a pro con and a clear opinion statement. Now, I've included up here, as you can see, language goals, uh, vocabulary, range of tenses, linkers, signposting, grammar, vocab tools, and opinion conclusion. This should also be part of your planning element. First of all, um, this is going to be about people getting older. So you might want to throw down a few important pieces of vocabulary. An aging society. Pensioners. Pensions. Um, you might talk about uh, support. You, what, you, what you want to do here is just do a, a very, very quick brainstorming session. Write down some vocabulary that you might be able to use in your answer. If you can remember any good vocabulary or uh, any phrases or any idioms, expressions, that kind of thing, throw, create a little vocab section and see if you can include those. Now, the essay, I'm going to talk about range of tenses. The essay talks about an elderly society, get, or rather an, an aging society. So naturally in that, you've got a discussion which crosses a number of time periods from the past, the present, and into the future. So in terms of your range of tenses, it would be quite easy in this context to include past forms, present forms, and future forms, but also the different forms as well. So uh, simple, continuous, present perfect, present perfect, continuous. Just remember what all of these things do. Present simple talks about largely about stating facts, truths, and habits. So if you're going to uh, present a situation, then present simple will be good. Uh, continuous talks about things that are happening now, activities, actions, whatever they might be. So building houses, looking after people, uh, um, you can say uh, supporting them, training them, uh, educating them. So there's lots of continuous uh, contexts that you could create there. You can create context for the perfect forms as well as well as the present perfect con uh, sorry the present perfect continuous forms. You just need a little bit of imagination, but in um, one or two minutes you can think of how you could include all of those uh, forms and all of those time phrases as well. Linkers and signposting. Now. I'm not going to go into any great detail about this. Rubens Valero and the other website in the first video I linked to have got plenty of these for you to have a look at. These are vital. You have to include these in your answer. They direct the reader. They connect everything up and they make your answer make sense. So you've got to use um, linkers, the basic linkers, uh, conjunctions, uh, and, uh, and, but, so, yet, uh, and, the, and the other basic conjunctions use uh, other transitions or link, uh, linking devices like such as however, furthermore, moreover, uh, in spite of, etc., etc. As a matter of fact, I'll scroll down here to uh, Rubens, and you can see here contrast ideas to list ideas. This is important in terms of creating order. So for here, you could say. Firstly, caring for the elderly. Secondly, jobs. Thirdly, or finally, housing. So you can create order in that way um, to describe a consequence, to conclude a topic. You can see that there's plenty of information there for you. Grammar and vocabulary tools. Um, if you can use rhetorical questions. Um, all of these problems uh, are facing today's modern society. How is it best? How have these things changed society? And have they changed them in a good way or not? It's a rhetorical question. It sets up the context of the essay. Think about conditionals. Because this um, answer talks about different time phrases, whether it's the past, the present, and the future, it's easy to use conditionals. First conditional to talk about the future. If we do this, 
elderly people will be looked after. If we had done this, elderly people would be better looked after now. So you've got first conditional, second conditional. Third conditional would be perhaps a little, no, you could probably think of a context for it, but it might be difficult. But certainly conditionals are fantastic. We use them all the time in spoken English, so you should use them all the time in written English. And then opinion and conclusion, I've already covered that. So I've gone through this in fairly significant detail, pointing out the pitfalls, the dangers, and what you should look to include and how you should approach this. And it's taken me, I guess, something in the region of about 10, 15 minutes. But for you, it should take less than five minutes, which is why this is something that you have to practice. Okay, let's have a look at the CAE question. Now, if we scroll down here, conveniently, we've got the same idea with language goals. Now, let's just remind ourselves what the question is. The question is, um, which subjects may no longer be taught at secondary school? And then you've got um, the four suggestions here. And then the question, write an essay discussing two of the subjects mentioned above. Let me just move that up just a touch. Um, you should explain why you think these subjects should continue to be taught at secondary schools, giving reasons to support your answer. Now, you it says write an essay, but it doesn't say who to. So let's assume that this is going to be um, neutral or formal in terms of register. And you've got to include, uh, in terms of what, do we, what else do we have to underline, you've got to include um, two of the subjects. Don't talk about one. Don't talk about three or four. Talk about two of them. And these mentioned above. You're not going to get any points for inventing things here. So if you start talking about, I don't know, physical education or information technology, all you're going to do is lose points. You're not going to impress the marker. And then you've got to explain why they should be continued why they should continue to be taught at secondary schools, giving reasons to support your answer. So if we analyze this, we also have got a wide range of time frames or time phrases. We've got the past, so what was studied in the past. We've got the present, which is what do we do? Do we continue to study these things? And then we've got the future, what should we study? So in terms of uh, the forms you can use, whether it's the simple, the continuous, the present perfect, and the present perfect continuous, there is scope to use all of those things. And of course, the past, the present, and the future. So if we go back to our range of tenses, this answer does allow you to use a wide range of tenses. I wouldn't say you have to use every single form of tense because that's obviously a bit ridiculous. No one uses every single form of tense when you're communicating normally and naturally. But certainly you should be able to cross off two time frames, the past, the present, or the present and the future, and you should be able to cross off t at least three or structures, whether it's going to be the present simple, continuous, or pre uh, perfect forms. Uh, link as signposting, um, the advice is pretty much the same as it is for the FCE. Perhaps more important would be the range of the signposting, the, the range of vocabulary you use to signpost. Um, so not just the basic signposts, but have a look at uh, what options you have available on the Rubens Valero website and see which other ones you can use, which other structures you can learn. Grammar vocabulary tools, the rules are the same as well. Look to use as many uh, conditionals if you can. Look to use what um, the grammar forms which are taught at CAE level. So for example, things like inversion, things like ellipsis, correct substitution, uh, and so on, so on. So make sure you've got a range of those to add flavor to your writing. And the opinion conclusion is pretty much the same as the FCE. So what about my plan? Well, here I've written a note to myself that this is going to be a neutral or a formal register. And my introduction is going to be a generic um, sentence, couple of sentences, maybe even a rhetorical question, which 
analyzes the situation in schools today. So the time pressure in schools, that, the, um, that, the, uh, that the parents want the students to know everything and that there's a pressure to include as much as possible into the curriculum. Let me include that in our vocabulary. Curriculum. Um, that there are modern demands that you perhaps didn't have in uh, old school systems, and but the traditional elements are important, and that we've got this sense of balance. So these kind, this kind of ability to sum up a situation is something that you have to be able uh, that you have to be good at when you're writing the essay question. Of course, this is something that you should practice, and if you can put this in the form of a rhetorical question, more power to you. Now, in Rubens Valero, it talks about, uh, on the website, it talks about topic sentences, topic sentences. And what, as I understand this, this is the beginning of the paragraph, which introduces what the main idea is about in that paragraph. So, you get through the introduction, and then the first line in the first paragraph is, what is it that I'm about to write about? And, uh, and how does that support my argument? Well, my topic sentence would be something along the lines of, um, I, want, uh, I want history to continue to be taught in secondary schools because history is the bedrock for nearly everything. So the idea is that without history, then many, many other subjects would be difficult to study. You might even include, even though you're trying to argue for history, you might include a very brief critique. So you might say, even though there are many aspects of history which perhaps are not as important today as they were, let's say, five or ten, uh, ten years ago from an academic point of view. Let me include that in my academic point of view. Let me include that in my vocabulary. Um, we still need to include we still need to study history because so there's that there can be you can think of um, a, a very short way to critique history or the way that history was taught go back into your experience whether you enjoyed learning history at school or not or how was it bad and just include a very brief critique but the main reasons have got to be clear um, to learn from mistakes, whether these are um, political, social, economic, and not repeat those mistakes. That's point number one. Point number two, history needed for university degrees, whether it's uh, so for further education, whether it's law, classics, politics, humanities, or sciences, and so, uh, so on. So there's two good reasons to continue to learn history. Now, you've only got a few, uh, relatively few words to communicate your points of view and at CAE level this is perhaps something that you should be aware of but you should also be aware of the fact that you can't explain things very very carefully or very very well in between 220 to 260 words so a form of critique critiquing yourself shows awareness of this difficulty that you have. And how do you do that? Well, you can say, uh, there's a couple of words that you might want to learn. Cliché. So, for example, um, I know this is a cliché, but, okay. Or another adjective that is also good for this is glib. Glib. Um, I'll leave you to work out what that is, have a look in the dictionary, but if you can include that uh, in terms of the difficulty of explaining something in, um, or paraphrasing what a problem is, you're going to get some credit for that. So this ability to say, I can say a lot about this, but unfortunately I don't have enough words to do so, and communicate that in your answer, is a good approach. For the third paragraph is art, um, and the topic sentence would be, um, even though you might say, once again, think of a critique that you might say, uh, uh, just to create a contrast. So you might say, although art is one of the oldest forms of expression, uh, art is still growing importance, and uh, as an equally important in terms of range of communication in today's modern world. Something along those lines, so you're contrasting the past with the future. 
and you can talk about the range of art, or at least this is what I would do. I'd say from uh, representation of the world, from drawing to representation in non-obvious ways through, for example, satirical content and so on. So you can think of a, a reason, a modern reason, a communicative reason for keeping art. Uh, also, you could say art is everywhere. So art isn't just, you can make the point that art isn't just on the wall in a museum or in a gallery, but art is absolutely everywhere, whether, it, whether it's logo, whether, whether it's a logo, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Snapchat, whether it's on Instagram, wherever it might be, art is very much part of the modern world and it's not something that's old and therefore should be something that, that is kept. So that leads us nicely onto the conclusion because we've balanced our argument so far. We talked about history and there perhaps we don't need to know everything about history but some history is important. Art is seem, it seems to be old but really it's really important in today's modern world so the conclusion would be it's really difficult to work out to balance which subjects should be taught in um, let's include let's go to our uh, Time demands. Let me just make sure that you can see that. Okay, yes, you can. Uh, time demands. So even with uh, lots of time demands on the curriculum at school, um, I would argue that dot 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 or I believe dot 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 or I think, in my opinion, whatever it might be. So we need a clear expression of uh, opinion. We need a clear expression of opinion. That's right. So there we go. Once again, I've broken this down how uh, as how I would answer this. And I would look to put this plan together, as I said, in under five minutes, bearing in mind not just the structure, but also my language goals as well. And so there we go. That's how I would answer those questions for the FCE and CAE. Now, I'm sorry that I waffled on and spoke for far too long uh, in terms of how I communicated my ideas, but it's important to go through that process because when you are beginning to plan, when you're beginning to learn how to plan, then it's going to take you a long time to be aware of all of those things that you need to include. And that first plan that you do may well take 10 or 15 minutes in order to build an effective plan, a plan which meets the goals of the question. So not just pro con pro con, but am I actually answering the question? Is this what the examiner wants? Have I included all of these parts into the question? And so, as I said, that first plan might take 10 or 15 minutes, but then through practice, you will get that plan process down to under five minutes. The structure for each question, including the essay, is predetermined, and I've gone through those in all of my previous writing videos. So that should already be in your head. The linkers, the discourse markers, uh, should already be in your head, or at least a good selection of them. The ability to summarize introductions and conclusions should already be in your head. This, uh, the exam, is not the time to learn how to do these things, which is why I stress you really do have to practice, you really do have to prepare. You can even do it at home. Uh, to a set, uh, you don't need a teacher to sit over your, uh, look over your shoulder and tell you whether you're doing it right or wrong. Um, if you follow the plan that I put out on the screen in terms of language goals and in terms of plan structure, you can just uh, do that. And if you can find a number of... Uh, exam questions online or in your course books, then you can do plans for all of the writing questions and time yourself. Put a clock up on the computer screen in front of you or set, the, set an alarm on your mobile phone, give yourself um, five minutes and see how quickly you can create a plan, see how quickly you can come up with ideas. So once again, I apologize for the length of the video. Hopefully uh, you can take something away from this. If you've got any questions or queries, then please leave them in the comments section below and I will get back to you. And if you have a look in the video description, there are links to some exam questions that you can practice developing your plans for. Okay, tomorrow is Tuesday, which means it's listening day. So I'll see you again tomorrow with some listening exercises. See you later.